Yeah. Because we don't care about anything else. We're a walking hard on looking for a hole. That's. <laughs> uh, I have to say you're right on that one. Oh, my God. <laughs> a stiff breeze comes through the room, and you return the favor. Got her in. Oh. <laughs> Somewhere on the outside of this building, there is a hole where squirrels come in. Trying better than to... a hole where dicks come in. Yeah, better than that. <laughs> Going down the stairs to wash the laundry. What the hell? Shh. Pizza, pizza. <laughs> stop! Stop it now! I order you to stop! I'm still touching myself. <laughs> Yeah! All young bitches want to do is pop pills, smoke weed, get drunk, lay around, suck dick, eat hot Cheetos, charge their phone, get a sew and weave, twerk, be bisexual, eat McDonald's, wash they pussy in the sink, lie, take <laughs> selfies, and talk shit through Wi-Fi because they phone never on. I think washing they pussy in the sink is my favorite part. (laughs) (laughs) The Vietnamese trade in dongs. Figuratively and literally, I'm sure. (laughs) Oh my God, that's hilarious. Um, I, I did decide to look it up. 500,000 dongs is a good night for Pops X. <laughs> like most women, oh. he's an emotional thinker. Good. God. I mean, that's part of the problem we're having now in, in our society is we have a bunch of emotional thinkers that want the world to, you know, to fall in line with their emotions. <laughs> it's not. Uh, look, reality doesn't give a shit no. about emotions. It's my lived truth. It's my lived truth. No, it's not. It's your perspective. Kiss my ass. Literally like, hey, Sergeant Pop, you got to turn your bear suit. I'm like, over my dead body. No. Just give me a statement of charges. Yeah. You're never getting yeah. this back. Yeah. You can suck it. I'm going to wear this with my Russian <laughs> coat. You, you will bury me in this. Hey, hey. <laughs> Why I got to fucking be like that, man? Because I'm an asshole and I learned from the best. I'm sitting across from him and I'm pointing at you with all four fingers. <laughs> all right. First of all, the Russian jacket. Is World War II surplus? I'll send you a picture of it, Sarge. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I got you standing new- wearing it with holding two giant buckets, like you just collected all the chum from behind the dump dumpster at the bar bar, and you're gonna go home and make ice cream out of it. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, you tall, twisted twat swatters? <laughs> Welcome to Grunt Speak. Live from the lair. Leap, clap, and flip to do in the house with Digital Dave. Yeah. It's call in stream tonight, ladies and germs. Have you dipped your pen in the company ink and then gotten it smacked? Maybe with a car antenna? <laughs> we want to hear from you. Dude, I got some good army stories in regards to that. Oh, I got a good one too. And quite a few. Like, over half of them like terminated people's careers and shit. That's no good. Yeah, so you always think, well, you know, it's just it's you know pussy of convenience. It's right there. No, <laughs> no, that's that's not how this whole thing works. Yeah, I mean, that's that's how you get there because you're stupid and you're yeah. thinking, but it's not a place you want to be. <clears throat> well, this is bad. Well, here's the thing, like especially in the military in the army where I was at, you get these these young girls come in. 
right out of high school. They're at the literally the peak of the sex, uh, sexual market value, and uh, they they know it, and literally they leverage that to get the easiest jobs, the least amount of work, and just coast. And then, or they go to college and get a degree in under underwater lesbian basket weaving, and then they wonder why they're a hundred thousand dollars in debt, making twenty five thousand dollars a year at Starbucks. Well, it could be, you know classes on uh, lesbian uh, sexual practices and they could be north and south liquors and, and they have to the east and west liquors they just don't get along what do you call two lesbians locked in a closet a liquor cabinet <laughs> <laughs> i have another joke for you actually it was sent in as one of the uh, the uh, effed up but funny submissions that we're going to be watching later on tonight but i think it'll work better with actual inflection because it was read by ai <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So I'll take the floor if you, if you don't mind. It's, no, it's, it's fine. It, it's worth it. So a little kid <clears throat> is uh, you know, over here and his mommy and his daddy having a fight. Daddy calls mommy a bitch. Mommy calls daddy a bastard. They finally calm down. Mommy, what are bitches and bastards? And they're like, oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's bitches and bastards. Crisis averted. <laughs> Next day, they decide to have makeup sex. And daddy's like, oh, yeah, T touch my wing wang. And mommy's like, oh, grab my titties. It's like, Mommy, what are dicks and titties? <laughs> Coats and hats. <laughs> Crisis averted. <laughs> Next day's Thanksgiving. Whole family's coming over. Dad's upstairs shaving, cuts himself. Shit! Daddy, what shit? Uh, it's, uh, it's the shaving cream I'm using. <laughs> no problem. Kid goes down to the kitchen. Mommy's, you know, getting dinner ready. She's slicing up the carrots. When he, oh, fuck, mommy, what's fuck? Stuffing the turkey. <laughs> it's all good. Ding dong. Family shows up. Honey, go get the door. Kid goes to the front door. All right, you bitches and bastards, hang your dicks and titties up in the closet. Daddy's upstairs washing the shit off his face, and mommy's in the kitchen fucking the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Point me off, Paul. Awesome. <laughs> I liked it. Pretty good joke. Not bad. It's a good setup. A good setup. Good setup. Good payoff. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. And I mean, uh, thank I've, you for the shirt. I'm not sure who sent this to us, but I've corrupted uh, quite a few young individuals. It's no, this, no, you never. This one kid, he's about three, and uh, we're hanging out at my buddy's sports house, and I don't know whose kid this is, and he's just like, I'm like, what do you want to do when you grow up? Because well, I don't know, maybe, maybe a fireman or an <laughs> army man. I go, you should be a rapist. <laughs> <laughs> and demonetized. <laughs> so the whole family's like, oh my God, this <laughs> little kid can say it. <laughs> I'm going to be a rapist, but I, I got yelled at so hard for that. I couldn't <laughs> stop laughing. Oh uh, my God. Oh, all right, sorry. <laughs> that's how you wind up with some cootie deuces on your dishes that's for sure yeah what are you gonna do i was i was having a bad day bad judgment day i'll take the rapist for 20 as therapists <laughs> it's wrong and you know it uh big shout out to uh gianni by the way life save number 407 35th birthday yesterday uh, he was hoping for a uh, wish on his actual birthday, but there's no show yesterday, so he would like a shout-out for tonight. So here is your shout-out, sir. And uh, he says, since you, you are right, since I turned 34, the big head has indeed started to take over the little head's duties and now has full control. Mm -hmm. With that said, I am looking to trade in the nookie for the cookie, the non-ass cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know of any places doing good trade? No, I don't. <laughs> so, I mean, this is probably four years ago. Uh, the number 407 number? Yeah. yeah, three, four years. Yeah, so, like, he literally got an additional four years. Winning. Fuck yeah, you know how fucking happy that makes me? I would rather him have it than Joe Biden, I'm just saying. Listen, man, like, I have no joy left in my life. The only joy I get is when I put another number on that board. That's it. <laughs> That's it. There you go. It's, it's the truth. Yeah. It's the truth. It's it's. This is better than therapy. Definitely. It's, well, cheaper. first of all, what you're all seeing here is the popsters therapy. Yes. And other people are benefiting from my crazy evil genius therapy as well. 
There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it at all. Oh, uh, so we did have a couple of uh, dudes send in their stories already, and uh, we want to intersperse those with some call-ins. So yeah. if you guys uh, take a look in the Meat Gazer box, you'll find the click-through to StreamYard, and feel free to join us. Tell us your stories. I know Pop's got a couple in the Oh, my God. We can start with this one here, nice and short, uh, signed by a gentleman who goes by Surreal. For the show about workplace issues, I once dated a woman from work who turned out to be a head case. Shocker. She and I were engineers, so I thought she would have to be somewhat stable to get through engineering school. She went from nerdy and passive to a horn dog in minutes and would jump my bones before realizing what she was doing. The downsides. She would bounce between working on side projects and then stay up till 4 a.m. watching TV shows all at my place before going to work the next day. And she always wanted me to be sorry for it because she had faster internet in the 90s where she was born in Asia than had to revert to using AOL dial-up in the U.S. when her family migrated. <laughs> Later, I found out before we met that she had had a developing thing for a supervisor who drove off from a parking lot at our workplace because he wanted to end whatever they were. Should have taken the hint as she stalked me in the company parking lot with fruit bouquets and cakes to win me back when I got tired of her snobby, erratic behaviors over time, and I was dumb enough to take her back once. Oh, my Lord. The last time I saw her, she was trying to stalk me again in the company parking lot with a cake shaped like a rubber ducky. Yes, she really did. That's, a, that's, just, that's just sad. You're the one. I made like that aforementioned supervisor and revved it out of there. The next day, I found that damn cake on my doorstep and saw it partly eaten, most likely raccoons and not her. This was the only time I ever dated at work and lost all interest afterwards for the mayhem I had chosen. <laughs> Hopefully the story gave you all a good laugh. Beware women bearing cakes. So he basically signed a blank check with his penis. Unfortunately, the cost was not that expensive. It's bad news bears, man. Bad news bears. <clears throat> and hey, look, that's what you get when you give him the 10 dick, man. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we, we covered this, what, uh, you know, last year, the 10 yeah. dick? Yeah. I mean, it's even worse if you go over 10. You know, you compound all those adjusters and you wind up, you know, dishing out the Reaper 23 dick. And next thing you know, you're getting 86 dick yeah. in prison. You get, you, get, you get prison wallet penetration syndrome going on there. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to make sure if there's any car keys inside. <laughs> I got to write that down. Pr 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 prison wallet party. <laughs> so disgusting why did i say that a lot wrong with that well it's a good way to skirt the youtube algorithm surprise butt sex probably uh throws a few red flags up in there but prison wallet party that just sounds like fun for the whole family a prison wallet penetration party <laughs> <laughs> only on the cruise uh jail we do have a couple of call-ins already first to take the stage is murdoch 68 good to see you sir what's going on except for your mic not working <laughs> please don't tell me you're trying to look at that while you're driving you're gonna kill us all <laughs> I, we can't hear you bro i can't hear him at all we got nothing jail no still i'm gonna can't double check you. and make sure that the audio is fine on our end i want to make sure nothing's screwed up and put an output is good on our end so it's got to be on his all right stay stay in the stage and see if you can work it out murdoch we can't hear you yeah yeah, I don't know what's going on. I'll, I'll remove him here. We'll move on to the next call here really quick. Uh, try jumping out and back in, Murdoch. That usually works. Oh, well, here he comes. Crazy Uncle already in the house. What's going on, sir? All right. Hey, keep the show running. I got to call my Okay, mom. I can't hear him either. What the hell is going on here? All right. Hang on. Are we having an issue? Mic volume is fine on our end. Yeah, what the hell? I have no idea what's going on there. That's really weird. I can't hear I can hear you. I can hear fine. you guys. So you guys can hear us. We just can't hear you. That is really weird. Well, we should have. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know what the hell is going on there. We should have done a rehearsal. How about now? You got me? Oh, there oh, it is. We got you. Okay. We got you. Okay. Tell everybody to double check their settings. Keep running the show. I got to step off and call my mother. No problem. Yeah, Pop's got to go check on his mom, and uh, we're going to stay here doing the deal. So. Yeah. I, <laughs> that's funny. I actually have that same shirt, bro. Oh, yeah. I, uh. <laughs> For those that didn't, I actually uh, put the same thing in one of the stories I wrote in one of my channels, and everyone's <laughs> like, where can I find that shirt? I go, I don't know. So 
it is what it is. Yeah, but then mom again, for me. <laughs> since uh, Blake, since you got that funny shirt, what do you think? Yep. Does this work too? Uh, that's fine. Although with inflation now, it's like a thirteen dollar foot long. You've been to Subway since uh, Bidenomics has taken hold. Holy oh. shit! Well, you know Bidenomics is working wonderful oh, for yeah. Biden. Yeah, for Biden and his donor <laughs> class. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the rest Although, of us uh, were enjoying the uh, prison wallet penetration party below decks, if you know what I mean. Ugh, I, I don't. I'm not sure. I want to know. Then again, <laughs> usually I wear this shirt when I'm on there. So oh, yeah. <laughs> A, a friend of mine's girlfriend, now wife, actually gave me this, and I keep asking her, where'd you get it? And she responds, I don't know. So, fuck it. All right. <laughs> hey, I got it, but I promise I can't wear it because everybody gets offended. You know, you know fuck that shit. Yeah. Anyway, uh, since we're going on the uh, don't stick your uh, pen in the company ink, I got one probably saved my butt, and another one I watched somebody get totally screwed over on this one. Floor is yours. First one, uh, I just happened to be uh, dating this woman. We met at a club. We never talked about where we work because we both worked in Colorado Springs. You know, Fort Carson's down there. So we're like, okay, don't talk about any of this. We're out there on like our third date. Now, we had already got a little <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I, What was that again? I, 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 I give her a thumbs up. I give her two thumbs up. I give her a yeah. No notes. <laughs> just a, yeah. Right. Anyways. I shit you not, I just sat down with dessert and I looked over and somebody walks over and goes, ma'am, how you doing? Shakes her hand. I go, you son of a bitch. And Pop can tell you, you're an enlisted guy and you're dating an officer and I was working in brigade and along with division, there is nobody that isn't in my chain of command. I'm like, you bastard. Oh you boy. Fucking son of a, I'm, I found him later, by the way. Uh huh. And, uh, yeah, I this only time I've ever actually knife hand somebody at the PX. <laughs> it, it was either knife hand them and make them go, "What the fuck, dude? Calm down!" or just jump on him and just like slam his head in the ground, you bastard. Okay, that happens. So, it does. It does. Uh, but here's one: you're just gonna be like, "What the hell were you thinking?" I was a drill sergeant. We had a single mother come in, and. She was a fresh drill. She was giving me the, she was giving me this guy, the fuck me eyes. When she came in, as soon as I found out she's a single mother, I'm like, nope, no, 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 no. It's like that scene from the Simpsons where Homer just fades back into the bushes, like the T-1000 and I'm out. Yeah, pretty much. And here's the fun thing. She ended up dating another drill sergeant. And unfortunately he ended up having to get in a move to another battalion because of her shenanigans, because she, some sort of shenanigans working with her. I'm like, dude, what were you thinking? It's called what were you thinking? You, 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 uh, they call you, that a rehabilitative transfer. Uh, it, it was. And which he's sucks lucky. Because, he's lucky. <laughs> That's like the, the bare minimum shit they do. Well, here's the fucked up part. He stayed with her. Oh, I'm uh, like, again, I just wanted a knife in it, which he was one of the better ones too. So I was like, what the fuck over? over. And uh, you're going to, I just got to leave with this one. A couple of the other female drills tried to get me to date their friends. And I'm like, okay, show me a picture. Oh, we don't have a picture. Forget They're it. Females with smartphones. You have a picture of all your friends. Let me guess. She's 40 pounds overweight. Or is it more? And they kind of looked at each other and I'm like, okay, so it's more. <laughs> <laughs> she and has the females. nicest personality though. Oh yeah, they pulled. Sure. They tried to pull she that bullshit. All of us safe at the bar, bar. Yeah. But here's the best part. I said, "Look, I don't care who your friends are. I don't do blind dates, and I don't do foodie dates. I'm not someone's foodie call." No. They didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. Mm. And I, when oh, I, they know. Them, they know. Uh, yeah, they, know. they pretend like they don't know, but they know. Well, here's the best part. We're actually sitting, almost all of us, and they brought it up again. And I, it's like, don't be a foodie date. Don't do that. She looked over. She, does everybody know what a foodie date is? Every single guy there was like, <laughs> they're like, we don't do that shit. No, <laughs> no, just wave off. That it, it's a, it's not even bang. That's just pop smoke. Yeah. Break contact. Run for the tree line. Jump the fence when you get there. It's get the fuck out. Yep. Yeah, I could never get along with a foodie kind of girl because you know, she's like, we'll talk about the food and. It's going to taste so good. See, I'm a dumpy. 
Mm. I'm like, that's going to be tomorrow. That's going to cut a good turd. <laughs> it's got corn on it, so it'll floss. That's going to nice. turn my ass into a water can. <laughs> hey, I just had buffalo totally incompatible. Wings, it is. <laughs> All right. I'll so um, I don't have any more, unfortunately, except the only time I know of guys getting uh, – messed up real bad is when they all mess with strippers which by the way guys don't just don't just, don't do it I, I, mean? I have oh, do it. never oh. ever in all of my career and all my travelings seen anyone pair up successfully with a stripper without having to deal with all of the crazy mind games the law might get involved yeah that first seven to ten yeah. minutes is great it's yeah. all the stuff after that where your life turns into a living hellscape yeah i watched everybody else's mistakes i was like you know what i'm good never mind <laughs> <laughs> doesn't look and, fun anymore no i'm all good i'm gonna go back to crayons <laughs> from the ones i knew about <laughs> eat, eat, eat crayons not pussy, not pussy. <laughs> God damn it. Eat crayons, not pussy. There's your new Marine Corps <laughs> fucking in recruitment <laughs> motto. <laughs> no, I, like, crazy uncle, what were you saying? Oh, I was going to say, from the ones I knew of that actually started dating strippers, about 80% of them ended up with something they couldn't shake. And oh, I'm not oh, talking oh. about baby carriage shit. I yeah, know I'm exactly about what you're talking about there. The burning uh, fire? Uh, to say the least, we actually had to stop one guy from putting his Beretta down his throat. Oh, that, was, that was not a fun day at Herping all. Down a syphilis. Yeah. <laughs> Double shot and pills and no cure. Yeah. And uh, for I'll just leave with this one. And this is just advice for the young guys out there. It's better to be in the gym doing burpees than in the club getting to herpes. Amen. So to that. Amen. I, all I, right. I that. like that. That's all right. Oh, yeah. All right. I'll take you out with one of these there, good sir. Gunnery. Oh. Uh, no, uh, it burns. It burns. You should I'll probably go clean that up. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, good sir. Thanks for calling in. Always a pleasure. I'm, I'm uh, sending I'm emailing the link to somebody sent me an email. That's all good. I'm just gonna throw one of these up there because we also have a written story here from Big Bad Wolf. Uh, he's a truck driver, so he's usually on the road when we're live. So he wanted to submit this far ahead of time to make sure that we were good to go. And it begins with here, oh, dipping the pen in the company ink, dot, 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 twice. Who's the guy who sent that one? Big Bad Wolf. Oh, okay. This is my story about dipping the pen in the company ink, not once, but twice. Back in the 90s, I was working for a moving company in the Rochester, New York area. After being there a few years, a new secretary started. I was in my mid-20s at the time, and she was 37 widowed her husband had been killed in a construction accident two years before wow. okay so she didn't ask for that no no that, that sucks but uh you're in your mid 20s she's 37 practice well it basically uh if she's going for the 20 year olds the 20 year olds don't know any better because she's gas station sushi <laughs> yeah well the thing they the older women go for the younger guys because at first they make them feel younger mm -hmm. but then when they actually have to spend time together it makes them feel much much older <laughs> yes it does <laughs> that generation gap is real ladies they and don't last long mm -hmm. no Whenever I was in town, we used to hang out at a bar that we pretty much paid the rent for. <laughs> we even had our own table with a company logo laminated onto it. Anyways, things have been bad in my marriage for a few years. Y'all know the later part of that story. Mm. Terry started hanging out with us on a regular basis, but only when I was in town. For some reason, she took a liking to me, even though she knew I was married, because we would all sit around and talk about how shitty our relationships were. And she took that as a means to an end. Even though she was 37, she had the body and looks of a 25-year-old, worked out on a daily basis, maintained a good diet, and didn't wear industrial-grade makeup. To say the least, she was a natural beauty, strawberry blonde hair, gray eyes, and every guy at the company wanted to bang her. On top of that, she had a great personality and was pretty much one of the boys, as were other females in our group that were in relationships with guys that I worked with. When we'd hang out, she'd fit right in. Anyway, one night, everybody else had taken off. It was just her and I left. As I was getting ready to leave, she followed me out to the parking lot and surprised me by asking for a hug, then grabbing me by my junk. Somebody was drinking the rum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Telling me she was in the mood for the first time in two years, if I was. Got to clear the cobwebs out. 
Oh, my Lord. Having a few drinks, not an excuse, obviously lowered the inhibitions, and I really didn't want to go home anyways to my nagging old lady, so I figured, what could go wrong? <laughs> Here we go. The bar was inside a Days Inn hotel, so she went and got a room that she paid for. When we got inside the room, I sat there contemplating whether or not I really wanted to do this while she was in the bathroom. But when she came out totally nude, the small head definitely overrode any thoughts of the big head, and my mind was made up. So basically, it's like this. Yeah. And we're done. I'll wake you up when I'm done. Okay, fine. But be good, Toby. Wrap your tool. <laughs> that never happens. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Not that we would know or anything. Uh, we see here. It was definitely fun, and her words, no holes barred. And yes, I got in all three that first time. As I said before, she was great looking and even better nude. Nice tight body and legs that went all the way up and made a beautiful tight ass out of themselves. Mm -hmm. That was the first time we did anything. And this went on for about eight months until my ex found out and told me either I quit working there or we were through. I was stupid enough to choose staying with her looking back. Ah! <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't affect my status with the company, as I was an owner-operator and went to work for another moving company. That didn't stop me, though, because I ended up getting involved with my female dispatcher at the new company of Barbie doll lookalikes in her mid-30s, big tits, nice ass, pretty face, in a bad marriage with a tool of a husband. It sounds to me like this guy's got a long a lawn dart for of cock. A little bit. Like th Everywhere he goes, he's like, and it, never ever trust a woman who just no. tells you her husband is a tool, though, unless you know him personally. They're always going to say that. Oh, he, he did at least. I met him on a few occasions, wanted to fold and wanted to fold his clothes with him still in them because he was such a douche nozzle. Mm. She had jokingly mentioned to me a few times about <clears throat> how she hadn't gotten any in at least six months. I had joked around several times sexually with her in the past. I told her some people treat their body like a temple. I prefer to use mine as an amusement park. <laughs> she told me, yeah, Terry told me all about it. Turns out they were good friends and told each other everything. Small world. Yeah, so in indirect uh, sex advertisements. A little bit, yeah. The women do that to each other all the time, and then they wonder why their friends wind up hooking up with the guys that they like to bang. After I delivered my shipment that day and she got back to the office, this was out in Buffalo and I didn't feel like driving home anyways. <laughs> she asked if I wanted to get together for a drink or two, to which I said yes. Needless to say, one thing leads to another, and we definitely broke in the sleeper of my truck that day. Unfortunately, word got back to the owner of the company and he told me, even though I was a great asset to the company, he couldn't have me banging my dispatcher. So he terminated my contract. Oh, wow. Long story short, even though it was a lot of fun, there are repercussions. Don't be a dick thinker. No pussy is worth the job, especially if it's a stinker. It's a career sinker. Yeah. Was I a scumbag for cheating on my ex? Yes, but dick thinking will do that, especially when you're in your mid-20s. Yeah, I've seen, I know lots of dudes that have uh, fallen down that hallway quite a few times. <laughs> 20s <laughs> is an hallway. awkward time for a guy. You ain't kidding. Yeah, so let's see if we can get the is uh, uh Murdoch if he's back in the show here. Let's see if he's working now. Murdoch, can we hear you now? I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah, we yeah, can we hear got you, now. you. All right. All right. Tell us your story, Murdoch. Been a while, sir. What's going on? <laughs> hey, um, well, first of all, I worked for US Airways at the time. And this is right after I got divorced. And there was this girl that worked there that was Oh, she, she was about five six, five seven, C cup tits, just All fucking right, so gorgeous. Stand by, stand by. <laughs> Could you stop with the description, the mouth watering shit? <laughs> All right, just, uh, just get on to the bad parts, You're okay? Gonna start to drool. Come on. All right, all right. Oh, oh, okay. It, it gets worse. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, great. All right. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, we dated for a couple of months, and then. Uh, the girl that I broke up with, I'm actually back with her because, fuck, dating sucks. Um, Jewish mortal. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's better to know the, the devil that you know versus the one you don't know. Like uh, allegedly, that. yeah. Allegedly, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so anyway, I, we were dating, I was dating her. We were having sex. I found out she was an ex-porn star because I happened to be on a porn site and I found, I found her and i was like damn now i know why she's so good at sex um but uh i woke Rick up just makes perfect <laughs> exactly but um. i woke up one morning with her and uh 
she decided what was it she we woke up she was in a bad mood she started smacking me across the face i lost i lost track at like 22 because i don't feel pain and i looked at her and i go are you done she's like yeah i go peace out so i hadn't seen her in like a month and then the girlfriend that i'm dating right now we she uh we got together through facebook because we used to date when we were in high school and she came over she asked me if she wanted to go if i wanted to go out with her my ex and i said no i've got plans well she ended up coming into i don't know how she got a key to my apartment but she ended up coming into my apartment while i was having sex with my current girlfriend and yeah, that shit, that, that really went, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm fucking, get out of here. This <laughs> <laughs> is bad, right? Yeah. Damn. So, uh, <laughs> what does this look like? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I get up, I walk out, she slams the door, I lock it, I walk back in, and she goes, and my current girlfriend goes, aren't, aren't you going to go chase after her? And I'm like, I'm going to fuck about her. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, about, about uh, a year and a half later, I ended up quitting uh, U.S. Airways because, uh, yeah, it got really, you know, it, it was awkward. Hostile <laughs> work environment? Just a little, yeah. yeah it's happened. <laughs> so, hey, um, wow. Blake, when Yo. I send you those fucked up but funny, is mm-hmm. the list that I'm sending you, you know, with the description and everything, is that okay? Or Oh, you know, yeah, it's all good, man. List. We actually, uh, on tonight's uh, submission list, we have like 27 videos. You submitted a bunch of them. Uh, we got, uh, actually, did we, was it yours tonight? Actually, no, I didn't have any from you tonight, but I got a new list from you today. That's why it was in my head. Uh, but tonight's wow. list uh, comes to us courtesy of Vincent Van Gogh Fuck Yourself, who is actually waiting in the wings. He's got a call as well. Red Pill Rebel, Berserk Hunter, and uh, Big Bad Wolf, actually, whose story we and- just read, and one from Lord Zed. <clears throat> Oh, wow. He sent oh. one of the submissions. I, also, I want to put an announcement out. All right. Last Thursday, we did a, we did a corruption stream, and towards the end. You mean Tuesday? Is or, it two we, days ago? Yeah, it was Tuesday, yeah. sorry. And uh, I, I got a really bad uh, feeling in my ESP parts. <laughs> so I just, I, I'm the one who nuked the entire stream. I literally I went on YouTube and deleted the whole thing. Yeah. But you can still see it on all the new tech sites. Yes. So if you oh. guys want to see that one, it's, it's on the new tech. Yes. But by, by the way, this is mine and my daughter's favorite shirt. Yeah, I noticed that when I made you full screen. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I'm just kind of pissed off that you guys didn't get the money for it. Well, we're still in the process of trying to figure. Yeah, that we're, out. Yeah, we're we're gonna unfuck that whole thing, bro. Yeah. Even if I gotta stay late tonight, we're gonna get it figured out. All right, thank you very right. much for calling in, Murdoch, and keep those videos coming. You're sending some good stuff. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. You too. Take it easy. Good sir. Yeah, there's Vincent Take Van Gogh fuck himself. Yes. Mr. Yeah. Redbeard. <laughs> Mr. Oh, let's just bring him in right now. Why the hell bring not? Him on. Jump in the line. But hey, what's going on, man? What's up, you red beard faggot? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> band. It, it, hey, to be fair, it only looks red because of fucking sun here in Texas. Like, it's it's brown or whatever. <laughs> oh, you're not in Texas right now. I thought you. I know you're local. Dude, it's where, where are you? In, where no, in Texas I'm, are you? Uh, I'm in Dallas right now. I just delivered. And I'm picking up. I'm headed back to uh, Grand Rapids. So yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. So, did you uh, dip your pen in the company ink, or is this a uh, oh yeah cool story? Oh yeah, I uh, definitely dipped my pen. Uh, in company <laughs> back when I was 2015. I was 20. Uh, I actually knew this chick when I was working at Jimmy John's at the time in Shelby Township. Sorry to dox the place. Whatever. I don't give a fuck. It's all, good. It's all right. I, I've been to that one before, actually. <laughs> all right. But um, who knows? I may have seen you. Fuck. I was a driver at the time, delivery driver, and um, like she had like she had just moved there from Texas originally, Houston, and um, like she actually uh got kind of a liking with me at first. I kind of thought that was weird at first, but then, you know, I kind of built some feelings for her and whatnot. I got to know her a little bit and whatnot. And there were some red flags that I ignored. Like, for example, she had an OWI in her record and she was on probation. And uh, I I thought that she was good. I've been there, done that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. 
And so I, I honestly thought that, like, she was trying to get her act together and whatnot. I, I, I guess she was at school somewhere in Iowa. She didn't say where, which, how, how she wound up in Iowa to this day, I still don't fucking know. <laughs> but um, I know. Um, so another big mistake, she was a year older than me at the time. I was, like, 19. And so, we, like, we're on and off. Uh, she dated some other guy who was like a mixed dude, and he, he was a bit of an idiot and a fucking. Sorry, guy truck next to me is turning into a fucking engine. My bad. <laughs> it's all good, man. Uh, all right. So, yes. Um, basically, so, flat, uh, like uh, fast forward about a year and a half later, 21. Um, she's a manager at the place. I quit one of my jobs. I came back there, kind of dick thinking of my stupid and um yeah things seemed all right at first we she was crazy in bed she was it was good and then all of a sudden one day um like she asked me if i want to go out somewhere uh for valentine's day i'm like yeah sure i'll uh after i get done with my side job like a being a pa announcer at the south campus of macomb i'll hit you up i hit her up nothing no answer mm-hmm. nothing about six o'clock I get to work the very next day. She shoots me the nastiest fucking stare ever. And she <laughs> just complete bitch for no fucking reason. And it was like this for about like three or four weeks. And she also had this one friend who is like typical Wamala or whatever. Just <laughs> anchor. Her, her, her hair was about this long. And yeah, like she didn't like me at all. And I honestly, I think like, I'll be honest, she kind of got in between her and I and basically tried to convince her that I was a piece of, piece of shit and whatnot. And mm-hmm. she was treating everybody like shit. Oh, another red flag. This asshole that uh, she was dating, I saw her one time hit him with a uh, with a ladder one time. Well, fuck that. All right. Yeah, so and, and so uh, do me a favor. What are the... Go ahead. What were the bad things that happened after you got done with this woman? I mean, how did it negatively impact your life? Um, well, part of the reason I well got with her because I saw a lot of my mom in her, and there I was going is. through a lot of shit. Yep. Yeah, I saw yeah. a lot of that when it was coming when she was coming unglued. My mom was coming unglued at the same time, and yeah, like oh, the day like the day she got fired. Uh, I, uh, I plugged my phone into the stereo in the back and I started playing I Don't Fuck With You by Big Sean. All right. Just to, just to celebrate. <laughs> and um, yeah, a few months later, I got the hell out of here. Shit went south with my parents. It was craziness. And I went to Colorado and uh, there's more to that story that I'll tell another time. All right, brother. All but right. So um, You don't live in Michigan? I, honestly, I dodged a bullet. But yeah. Yeah, any t- anytime you, you get away from a crazy bitch, I'm breaking up here, you dodge a bullet. Oh, yeah, every time you can feel it in your body and yeah. your mind, too. Mm-hmm. Right? It just kind of resets and goes back to an equilibrium. Mm-hmm. All right, let's let's hit the next one. All right, thanks for calling in, good sir. Yeah. And keep those video submissions coming. You All got right. some good stuff. Take All care, right, guys. Your beard, you faggot. <laughs> well, do that was because you can't grow. One. I cannot grow a beard. I know. All right, <laughs> it's all envy. Don't worry. Yeah, about they're it. pretty nice. <laughs> Jealous take much? Jealous much? All right, take it easy. Take man. it easy, man. Thank you. All right, we got another company ink story that was submitted in about three days ago uh, from a gentleman who goes by Jay, a Leo friend of mine, law enforcement officer. Yes, told me a wild story about some sheriff's department deputies dipping into more than just the company ink. It was a long story, but I will try to shorten it for the sake of time. Some of the deputies in this department were banging one or more of the administrative staff, jailers, etc. One of the deputies allegedly went off the reservation and betted a bar salute, which ended up exposing who all was involved. Not too long after, all who were involved developed the burning ring of fire, <laughs> the variant that does not wash off with antibiotics. Yep. My Leo friend said he noticed a lot of mouth sores on the women in the admin area when he had to go in and drop off paperwork. Herpes! (laughs) He said the shit really hit the fan when deputies who were not involved got the herps as well. This was because their wives were getting banged by their husband's co-worker. 
Oh my God, that's that's how you get killed, man. It's a circle jerk, man. Wow, this is crazy. This was happening with uh, some of the wives of the deputies who were also not involved in this shit show because the herpes do not care. My ha- my friend found out about all this because his department was called in to try to keep the peace due to the fallout. He said there were armed deputies trying to hunt each other down, death threats, demotions, wives leaving town to escape the wrath of their husbands, and a ton of divorces. Yep. The sheriff somehow got everyone reined back in and things slowly returned to normal. My friend said this ring of fuckery was big enough to keep the health department busy for months. Uh, wow. Popster, sorry to hear about your mom. We will be praying for her. Keep Thank up you. the good work and good to hear you on Lieutenant Colonel Murray's podcast. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And wow. uh, it looks like I'm probably going to be on the Pearly Thing show in May. So yes. Hopefully that'll hopefully that's when it's being recorded that's when it's being recorded yeah so hopefully that uh you know murphy doesn't get involved and screw that whole thing up i know right uh speaking of which we wanted to check back in with pop's first girlfriend because you know we always like to check in on train wrecks of the past and i'm sorry but little debbie has found a new man oh here we go (laughs) that is amazing my bad yeah she's such a bitch i know right packing on the pounds well, actually, by getting pounded <laughs> you know, for being like 73 years old, she's looking pretty good. I know, right? <laughs> she's still cheap, though. Very cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Those, uh, those honey buns. Yeah. Just, just uh, listen, rub them all over your face. <laughs> we, I would buy a whole box of the little baby uh, zebra cakes. Oh. Back in the day, it was like a dollar 20 for like, you know, 12, 12 of them. You just eat them all, wouldn't you? I would eat, yeah. The, Eat the whole thing in a day. Yep. Didn't care. And <laughs> literally, I go to the store now. They're, it's like seven, eight bucks. Yep. Like she's still a cheap bitch. Still a cheap bitch. But, uh, you know, she does quite well in a pinch. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she don't make you lasagna afterwards. No, then I get, you just get cake. <laughs> All right. Next up on the company Inkwell is MGTOW Mando. Welcome back to the show, good sir. Hey, guys. Can you hear me clearly? We got you. All right. Um, When I was stationed in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, back around 2010, 2012, we had a, in my opinion, smoking hot little blonde get assigned to another platoon in my company. Because up to that point, like usual, I had zero success with the ladies. I tried asking her out. And shock of all shocks, she actually said yes. We were going out for about six to eight months. Only girl I've ever gotten to second base with, by the way. Mm. And I get, or she gets sent to some class for recon decon. I get sent to Fox recon school about two weeks later. And we meet up at the training site, hang out for a couple hours. She gets back to home or home base and stops communicating. Mm. Well, for the remaining five weeks of Fox School, I'm trying to contact her at least once a day via text message because I always made it a point to send her a good morning beautiful text. Yes, I was that blue-pilled singer. There's your first mistake. (laughs) Well, I probably set a speed record in that cruddy little Pontiac Sunfire I had at the time. Mm-hmm. getting back to Campbell at the end of the class. And I'm intercepted by one of the better friends I had at the unit. Who's like, Hey, go in the side door. Don't go anywhere near her room. Cause we happen to share the same barracks building. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, what's going on? Is she okay? And they're like, yeah, she's fine. She just doesn't want anything to do with you. Like, <laughs> Sounds oh, about okay. Right. Why? She won't say. Because she's getting a dick somewhere else. She's a barracks bunny. I just sent you another story. Okay. Uh, you're, you're very like you very well maybe correct. Mm. No, we, we are correct. Is, <laughs> when, when I met, we both were in agreement that we were going to wait until marriage. Mm-hmm. So I was holding up my end of the bargain. I got whether you. she was or not. I don't know. Probably not. Let's there be honest. Are, there are women out there who. All of a sudden, it's time to wait until marriage after they've stacked up 148 Diakas. Yeah, it, it, either way, like I said, I 
I held up my end of it. I gotcha. Whether she did or not, don't know, don't care. And and listen, you know, when you're young like that and something like that happens, it's incredibly painful for dudes. Yeah. And well, there are ladies who think that they're buttering you up when they say, well, I had a horror phase. I don't want to make that mistake with you because you're a good guy. Well, yeah, actually, they think they're buttering you up. But what they're really saying is, I gave it up to a whole bunch of assholes, but I'm going to make you work for it. Correct. About a, about a month after I got back, seeing the amount of nonsense that was being caused between my platoon and hers, because every time I had to interact with her, she was colder than elsa <laughs> i do you need to I, let it go <laughs> i finally called the branch manager for my mos field and was like look i don't care where you send me i just need off this post yep i see bad things coming very soon get me off this post and it's not deployment related you can send me somewhere that's going to iraq or afghanistan i don't care yeah there you go okay <laughs> and about Six about three weeks after this, we're doing one of the big community events between Fort Campbell and one of the local communities. And she is saying she doesn't know where to go. I'm standing right there, and somehow I got tasked with the same general area that she was in. I was like, Hey, you go down this street, turn here, you go to this location. She ignored me. The Hmm. NCOs that were there we're like hey he's trying to tell you where you need to go she's not acknowledging this is the very first time i broke out nco voice and literally everyone else in the bay just stopped what they were doing turned and looked and was like holy hell he actually has a pair (laughs) (laughs) he's jumping in somebody's shit i like it and she she actually turned around and acknowledged what i was telling her i was like roger and leaves Fair enough. Ugh. I every now and again I will reach out to people who I knew at that post to find out how she was doing. Yeah. Because I actually still care about this idiot or this person. I know I'm an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's different for dudes. If you get emotionally attached to a woman, it it's very hard I to was, shut that shit down. Mm-hmm. I was actually considering converting to Catholicism to actually pop the question to her. Mm. Well, thank God you didn't do that because that beer tastes terrible. That's, that's true, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah that's, but... Mm-mm. Yeah, looking back, it's probably a good thing that that, that, that didn't happen because she's the one that gave me the cursed object that I told you guys about on a previous so what, whatever, whatever happened to her, do you uh, have any idea? No idea. All right. Well, After I left the post, lost contact with her. Everyone I knew who knew her at the same time, they all PCS to different locations. One guy ETS'd out afterwards, wouldn't uh-huh. talk about her. And I was like, okay, fine, whatever. I look her up on Facebook every now and again, and her profile hasn't moved since like 2014. Yeah. One, one of the uh, girls I had dated while I was in the service, just very briefly, gave me the business in a very, very bad way. Yeah. Uh, apparently I found this out about a year and a half ago. She was living in a van by a river. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But but before I go, I do have a joke that Blake, you reminded me of at the beginning of the stream. If I may, what did one lesbian vampire say to the other lesbian vampire? What? Same time next month. Same time next month. (laughs) Yeah. There you Ah, go. Ah, Wow. Damn. That's like tapping the keg. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to tell you guys up any further. I'll jump off so you can get some of your other more long-winded dudes in. Uh, All right. You got another story to read? (laughs) Take it easy, Mando. Thank you. Oh, we got a Jeeves. We got a Jeeves. What's going on, man? You look like you're in Evil Genius Central over there. What is that? you, You own like a computer shop or something? 24 hotel for life man all right <laughs> Sorry, uh, <Jared. laughs> if you weren't trying to take any women on the surfaces in there you'd wind up with a microchip stuffed up their anus so what mos is 24 hotel uh the computer geeks that do this you know the oh, old, yeah, okay. jazz hands on the gargler 
no thir- problem, no problem. Thirty pound brains, dance, puppets, dance. I, I, I'm not quite as smart as uh, your Coburger guys, but I try. I, it's <laughs> we we keep everybody, you know, talking to each other. And if you piss me off, oh, I'm sorry, your radio doesn't work. Oh, there you go. All right, so what what's your story? <laughs> um, uh, I'm sure you boys both saw the uh, the nice the uh, the nice collective there that I sent you. Um, worked for an IT company in Toronto. Um, went through multiple rounds of interviews where it's uh, here's a problem. What would be your solution? And four rounds later, after spending an hour traveling, it's like, oh, by the way, we're going to hire you. Here's the problem we need you to deal with. And they hired an intern fresh out of whatever the local <laughs> college was, the paper mill. And she was all, you know, you can't hack my insert euphemism here because I went to college and none of you are smart enough to figure it out. Dumb person yeah. doesn't realize. And again, my my other half is on that side of the wall. Um, doesn't realize that all of us have ad, or domain admin credentials and the USB drive she plugged into her computer has all of the spicy photos on it. <laughs> oh, my. Nice. So it's 20, let's say 25 years of IT. And I went, ah, and went, oh, look, look what I got. So we had a conversation. And then the conversation, let's face it, I'm blonde, blue eyed, you know, giant. 50 pound brain forehead you know this face for rent etc um yeah it, it it devolved into um the communal bathrooms on lunch break fucking and then going for lunch and then uh once everybody left the office it can you know fucking on the boss's desk and then once the performance reviews came around it was a case of maybe you should look at your security cameras <laughs> and of course being a domain admin you have like full a domain admin to anybody who's not you know an it person is i have the keys to everything go fuck yourself <laughs> so i had already pre-burned a copy of it and when you quote fired me for cause i threw the dvd at him and just walked out of the office so there you go. Yeah, and we had a similar situation in Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq in 2004. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there was a uh, female with some spicy photos on a thumb drive that she left mm-hmm. in the internet cafe. I think I remember this story. And literally, that they printed these pictures up, and they were everywhere on post. And I, I like. I remember I went to the battalion meeting and like, yeah, well, we have this nurse, and apparently she left a thumb drive, and she was sending some photos to her husband, and now they're all over the post. Can you tear them down? I'm like, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I literally, I have no. Like, we're getting mortared every fucking day. I don't care if you left your spicy photos up, and now they're all over post. Go fuck yourself. I got better shit to do. Yeah, there's a lot more pressing matters at hand here. Uh, yeah. Left not- or right with those pictures around the barracks, you don't yes. know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing Billy Bomb Bomb, this is going to turn into some kind of... <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, three, day, three things before... <laughs> Three things before I run away. Um, I haven't forgotten about you boys. Uh, money has been tight around here just due to the fact of changing careers. This is still on my desk for you guys for your multiple Gate access. cruise bridge, you dick. <laughs> uh, I, I feel like I should be in my truck from the last group of people who have been here because, you know. I know, right? I, I left 30 years in IT and I went to drive a truck. Ironic, I know it is. And, right. and if any of you boys uh, back east can send me from Fago, uh, there's a bunch there of us go. out here. Uh, 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 <laughs> fr- phrasing. <laughs> Fago. F-A-Y-G-O. It's cola. Right. I know it's hard for the rest of the send nation. Us, send us an email to Redonkulous12, and we'll see if we can hook you up with some stuff. You want some, like, rock and rye or just whatever? You, you got to have the rock and rye. Rock man. and rye is the best. That is the rock best. Rock and rye. Cream soda, the orange crush, and what's the purple one? I can't. You know remember. the fagos love the cream soda. 
<laughs> I I left Ontario to go to northern northern Michigan up by Charlevoix, and they put me on a bus with a bunch of juggalos. I got my headphones on. Oh my Eminem. I'll just let that play out. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next one. I've only ever known like one juggalo in real life, and she got naked in a Rob Zombie movie. It's weird <laughs> to think that I know her. <laughs> sure it didn't happen. Uh, to check her out. She's in the movie 31, wearing a mask. Her name is Sandra Roscoe. She's not shy. Oh. Met her at a party when I was uh, trying to get with her friend. <laughs> Been a pleasure, Pop. Out. Yeah. <laughs> take it easy, Jeeves. Take it easy. Thank you. If, it, if it's that easy, I'll take it a few times. Oh, there you go. Oh, hey, hey. Ah. I'll, 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 you take your own cream soda. I'll take my rock and roll. We go our separate ways. You take your fago. I take my fago, and it's all good. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Keep your forehead safe, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make fun of. Them. I have a matching one, so it's all good. Like, yeah. Oh, what's going on, man? You got a six head. Yeah, I do. I got a six head. And things happen. You know, you get older, things burn back. That's right. Yeah, I used, what have, it is. I used to have a three head. Now I have a six head. Yeah, it happens too. Uh, we got one last written story here from uh, Pat. And he says, I've got one for you in terms of this concept. There was a CPT who I served with who was in charge of the Alpha Distro Company and the Aviation Support BN. Her name was Kristen Lafort. She was the definition of toxic. Loved to scream at people mm. a lot. And when she would scream, her eyes would go akimbo and be pointed in opposite directions. <laughs> That's good times. We got orders to go to Germany for OIR. This was during the Kung Flu. I spent nine months of my life on a two mile by two mile Luftwaffe base in Germany. Mm. My first son had just been born and I was half a world away doing dumb shit. This rotation would end up being infamous. <clears throat> The higher officers had a lot more ability to go travel. There was a staff ride that they did, and as is typical, they got loaded after the battlefield tour. They went bar hopping and ended up in a strip club in Poland. The oh, story is legendary. No. So we were under G01 for the first month. After our first field problem, we'd be able to drink. We, can, we got back, all hell broke loose. You've got soldiers who haven't drank for two months. Things predictably devolved. I, being a responsible person, had a few beers and was back in my room. I got a knock. Sir, uh, we need to go on a courtesy patrol. We were wandering around trying to keep people from making life-ending decisions. We found a fight popping off, and my roommate put hands on one of the guys in the middle of it. He said, do you know who the fuck I am? He was a BN commander who apparently thought it was a good idea to try to stop a fight. Battalion commander. And his CSM wasn't around to keep him from doing dumb things. <clears throat> yep. Broke that's, up. That's what they're for. Yeah. We broke up the fight, which had the potential to turn ugly. He was an E7 versus a CWO. I went in and de-escalated it. There would have been an investigation and mutiny charges if things were allowed to progress. Yeah, that seems to be ridiculous. Bad news bears. So Captain Lafort had, to, or CPT, whatever, is, it, is that Captain? Or is yeah, that, Captain. Captain Lafort had disappeared, and nobody could figure out where she was. We sent our S2 to go find her. S2 was a branch-detailed IN to MI guy. He found her and walked her back to her apartment. She was wearing nothing but a T-shirt and panties. She was ranting at everybody that she was just calling her mom. Her mom was a retired full bird. The guy she was cavorting with was an aviation CWO. Mm. Her first sergeant was group support for a while. It was pretty common in 101 aviation. If you throw a rock, you're going to hit somebody who was 160th <laughs> and got orders to, to go do force comm stuff. This first sergeant's full-time job was keeping this woman out of trouble. She got an MQ for her company command and went off to be an ROTC instructor. It's fucking punishing watching shitty people rise up and get the velvet glove treatment. Yeah, I know. Uh, I've seen it too, even in the private sector. The army looked at this insane woman and thought, she's leadership material. The army looked at me and said, he's a problem. We want him gone. I did everything in my power to protect the men I was responsible for. I lived up to the shit umbrella archetype. I'm well loved by all the NCOs I served with because I wanted to protect my soldiers from their leadership. I joined the army because I got laid off and I needed money. I went through basic and OCS at Sand Hill where the clay is red and the fire ants will eat you alive. Been there. Got it. My wife's cousin, Ryan, was an 11B who went on to be in the honor guard of the tomb of the unknown soldier. Mm -hmm. We're not sure whether he actually took his, or actively took his life or whether he's just another ca casualty in the opiate wars. His wife found another guy and his kids are being raised by a stranger. 
I wanted to prevent this from happening to anybody else. At the end of the day, I was able to protect a lot of people, but I hung up my beret, joined the Army to help my family, and my litmus test for when it was time to go was that if it hurt my family more than it helped, it was time to seek the exit. No problem with that. And listen, if you run across guys going through hard times, send them my videos, man. Yeah. All right, we're going to keep these calls moving right along here, but I don't think we need any more just because we're already approaching 9 o'clock, so everybody who's already in the queue, you're welcome to stay. We got Jeremy495, and he is rainbow wheeling. (laughs) What's going on? I'm not sure what happened there, but we'll remove him. He might have a connection issue, and then we'll move on to everybody's favorite youper, Thumper the Sweaty Fat Guy. Going out, man. What's <laughs> I'm not a youper. I'm a transplant. I'm a uh, corn husker. As long as you're not a transgender, I'm fine with it. Oh, no, no, no. I got all my plumbing. <laughs> hey, it's important, good sir. It's functional and factory condition. <laughs> and you've got your cool little LED sign behind you. At least I'm assuming yeah. it's still there. Yeah, I got it. But, you know, I'm not turning my camera on because, you know, fuck you guys. Okay. It's all good. I'm, I'm sure that whatever's going on there is something we don't want to see. Well, I'm just naked, you know. <laughs> Latin is flab everywhere. It's just amazing. Fantabulous. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, I got my back hair fitted into a macrame plant holder. That's just disturbing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I only got a wow out of pop. Okay. Did your Let's company story, next story? Did, they, they, did they, they use it as reins when they were, you know, shoving the strap on up your prison wallet? No, no, I, didn't, I don't get any strap-ons in the prison wallet. No. You just get the real ones. Not today. I, I am too large for that for anybody to even consider it. Large and in charge. All right. So what's your story there, fat guy? Well, <laughs> I've, I've never dipped my uh, pen in the company well. Okay. But, but. I, I uh, can explain what happens if you do. Okay. Because, you know, 1990, stationed in Germany. You know, and the girls that got that platinum pussy complex going on. A little bit. Where the fours think they're tens. <laughs> so you mean present day United States? Yeah, yeah. You know, there it's you now come to the civilian world, but it used to be overseas military bases. Now it's everybody. That used to be called the Deployment 8. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, you know, this is 30 years ago. 20 years ago, it was a Deployment 8. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. But, I, you know military customs and courtesies you walk past somebody you know like on the sidewalk or whatever well you salute if they're officer but Mm -hmm. you know just enlisted you walk by you give a verbal greeting right so i'm like hello you know hi how's it going what's up and uh well i got called into the first sergeant's office one night one day and he's like so uh so we uh get this report that you're like harassing somebody and I'm like, huh? <laughs> what, what do you mean harassing somebody? He's like, well, this other airman, she come in and she said that you sexually harassed her. And I was like, okay, who is this person? <laughs> you know, because I'm like, you know, I, I was engaged to uh, my uh, basketball American girlfriend back in the States. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You know, so I, I'm not messing around <laughs> with anyone or green. <laughs> It's just not happening. Okay. All right. So, you know, you wear green, you're off the menu. It's just like the, you know, the thing. And uh he says, Well, like you, you know, she green, said you she said you've been uh, saying stuff to her. And I was like, Really? So I said, Who is this person? He told me. And I was like, I've said like maybe three words to her the entire time I've been stationed here, which was like a year at that point. And he's like, Well, what'd you say? Is like verbal greeting, you know. Hi, how's it going? Good morning. Hmm. So that went around the base. And then three other women chimed in and said, certain fat guy or airman fat guy, he 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 said hello to me too. And one of them said, he, he told me I look nice. Because, you know, she was dressed up to go to the club. And I was like, wow, oh, you look nice. It, you know, I treat them like dudes. But, you know, since I'm only 5'8", they uh, figured that I'm not good enough for the, to talk to them. Wow. Yeah. Yep. So, and that's where we're at with all the civilian chicks right now. Mm-hmm. They're all like, well, you're not 6'4", and you don't have two helicopters. 
And, you know, you're not packing something that's dangling around your ankles that you have to tie down to walk. All men have one helicopter. Die alone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and I'm have like, have fun and box wine and cat land. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I found a new way to spell the boxed wine to get around the uh, YouTube thing. Yeah. W-H-I-N-E. <laughs> boxed wine. Oh, <laughs> my man, join us. I don't know if we're getting dinged for the <laughs> box wine and Catland thing. I think we just get dinged for me just using way we're too just... much profanity. Yeah. Oh, no, us never. Well, you, you're, you're not going to get dinged for box wine and Catland saying it or having your little skit video. But uh, I have like this uh, ever increasing list of words that I'm not allowed to write. Hmm. Yeah. You know, I have noticed that. Yeah. And I'll be like, just, and it's even on the car stuff. So I'm like writing stuff and it's like, it doesn't show up. And I'm like, what the hell? You know, Gunsight One, he, he, he's always like, what, why did what you say get flagged? And I'm like, I don't know. You'd be shocked. Yep. All right, we got to move on no, to the next small so. thumper, but I really appreciate you calling in. Your stories are always a pleasure. Thanks, man. All right, have a good one. Take it easy, brother. Have a good one. Who's the next guy? All right, we also got uh, Brian Rangers in there. If he's still with us there, just unmute your mic so I can see that you're paying attention. All right, oh, he's here. I'm here. Yeah, what's going I'm on, here. brother? What's oh, going on, you guys? Hey, hey, um, yeah, Pop, you got my, you got my cash apps I sent you. Thanks for... Those um incredible pills that you offered, they were, it, it was quite. What pills? I don't know. It sounds like we're doing um, a drug we, deal here on YouTube. We, no, 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 no. Um, the health remedies. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The, remedies, the, the, the yes. supplements. Remember, 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 Blake. I'm, I'm, I'm half white and half Mexican, so I get blamed for both. I get blamed for being an evil genius, and I can also claim. I don't know nothing about so, nothing. So you're you're a Mexicoc. <laughs> He's a fence jumper. <laughs> a no, 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 no. But, but, but Pop, that's that was um that was back in the military where they told me that he goes, you can be a victim and you can be an evil genius at the same time. But Pop, you and uh, Digital Dave, you guys all get slammed in the. You guys get hit in the slammer immediately. Yep. The so, moment anything goes bad, they just cut the rope on you. For the most part, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, you're the but, uh, it is what it for is. the most part. Uh, for the most part, thanks you guys for offering something for everyone that's fans of yours. And um, I always like to support great people that do great things for this nation. It's uh, it's pretty sad when our life's going these days. Yeah. You know. But yeah. but anyway, let me let me. Let me go set the mood real quick. Okay? All right. Uh, yeah. uh, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. I just have to give people the props whenever they give great information that helps others. So definitely. Okay. Now, now, uh, I'm, I'm, now remember, I'm 28 this year. And I'm, I'm getting old as old as dirt. So I got to I gotta save up my money for me to go overseas and have some fun. You still smell like pee. What are you talking about? You're getting old as dirt. I know. I'm old, Blake. You're, you're barely old. out of poop and mustard, man. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Well, well, well um, as, uh, as some geniuses that I knew back in the Coast Guard, they said, you're supposed to be something more than me. Hmm. That's what they were telling me. They go, don't do what I do. I've pissed my youth in so many ways, and I've had to pay for it seven times over. Yeah. So that's why I never got married. Well, there you go. Yeah. You know, anyway, anyway, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be too controversial. For you. <laughs> but let me, right. let me start this story. Let me start this story. So, um, my parents were divorced. My dad lived in, uh, somewhere in the area of, of Sacramento and, and believe it or not, Terrence, California, believe it or not. Okay. <laughs> that's what it's called Terrence that's what it's called yeah. and then i know yeah, it's it's hard to believe it's terrence county so i thought the pop lived down there you know <laughs> um but and then my mom lived in des moines i i had and that was part of the reason why i was always hated back in the days because for most of my childhood i got to go to both iowa 
elementary school. Okay, can we get an elementary story? I mean, you're kind of giving us your whole backstory here. I'm going to be wow. honest with you. We don't give a shit. <laughs> you're really. supposed to call it and tell us a story about dipping bro. your pen. No, 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 I got you. I got you. You got, got like you. four guys waiting on the line. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all right. The point is, is I graduated high school and then I went to roll work with my mom as an insurance um, analyst or people that do the, the underwriting for insurances. So we're just yeah. entering... And just entering claims in in this huge ass envelope shelf of bullshit, but that's a whole nother story. So for the most part, I was helping my mom and there was a cute girl. Hmm. And that was the boss's daughter. And you uh, wanted to underwrite her policy? Well well <laughs> um, <laughs> the crazy <laughs> the crazy part is the crazy part is that she wasn't that pretty. But then there was like a 38 year old woman who want who liked me, and and my mom, being a feminist, didn't see the difference. Like I go, mom, why is she buying me sodas? And my mom goes, no, 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 she's just kind, you know. No, no, she oh, wants to make sure oh. your spunk is sweet when you shoot it down her throat. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and remember, I'm I'm 18 at the time. Oh, that's why. And she's like, oh, and she's like forty. She's like, she was thirty nine at the time. So yep. this is basically Wango Tango. Yep, she was just at that stage in her life. Yep. Oh no, no, don't worry. I was. So, uh, I was, so what happened? Well, she she brought me out to a date, and then we started asking questions. And I had an evil genius cousin, and then I asked her about her relationship, and she says she's been living alone with a dog of a Great Dane, and then my cousin says. Whoa, yo, 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 Brian, cut, 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 cut loose. Yeah, you're gonna have to share that kitty with that thing. <laughs> Scooby Doo and a jar of peanut butter. No, no, so, so there's that. There's that, you guys. It was a great Dane, huh? You can, right. you can use my video as a it's just to help out your analytics and viewing All time. Right, it's right. just so wrong hey, at so many levels. <laughs> I know, I know, but uh. You go. You guys take it easy. God bless, and thanks you guys for what you do. <laughs> thanks, man. Thanks, thanks Brian. Man. You take it easy, bro. Thanks. Oh God. <laughs> wow. I can't jockey for space with a great day. I, I just can't <laughs> I just, do it. I can't. Like it just instant flash. Where's the evil Shaggy when you need him? <laughs> Swinks. <laughs> Swinks. <laughs> you walk in on that. <laughs> just That's... instantaneous flashback to that story. <laughs> oh. That's fucked up, man. <laughs> she wants some jinkies in her winkies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got Wackle the Weird. Oh, actually, you know what, Jeremy? Yeah, we actually we were trying to get into his earlier. He looks like he called back in. Let's see if it's working. Jeremy, are you there, good sir? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me, brother? Uh, nothing much. Um, <clears throat> and Pop, you you do know I'm keeping you informed with uh, the case. With the what? The case. Oh yeah, Jeremy four nine five. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that's one of those uh, comprehensive. Is next month on the fourteenth, and then the next week I'm I'm going to trial. So I'll okay. keep you informed with that if I have the ability. But when it comes down, the the, the story actually got pretty interesting here, guys. Um, so back in 2004, I went to go work for the largest air conditioning company in the world, which is here in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. Anyhow, um, about 2007, um, a dispatcher had, had come on board. And um, I started noticing after about six months of her uh, being there, she, she was moving up through the ranks. And then let's say there's a female technician or a different dispatcher or something of that nature. And I'd be flirting, you know, whatever. And any female that would end up taking any form of interest in me would all of a sudden get transferred someplace else. Ah. Hmm. Girls started disappearing. After about the third, I start asking, you know, I'm like, you know, asking the buddies, hey, so what's what's going on? They getting Clinton? What? Oh, <laughs> We're talking about my ex here, so oh, no, I, <laughs> so yeah, we can we can call her whatever we want to call her. Allegedly. Okay, but the story gets good. Uh, what we got is, of course, I'm not going to go into all the specifics. We're talking about dipping in the company ink. 
So I end up hooking up with her because she pretty much makes herself the only option. Hmm. So uh, that was, yes, uh, pre-built family, four kids. Yeah, yep, yeah. yep, yep. Hey, it, I oh, didn't no. know any. I didn't know any better. Oh, so God. anyhow, why didn't anybody <laughs> tell you? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> exactly. There you go. <laughs> if we if we had the type of infrastructure for men that we have now, I mean, the scripts are changing, and it's great. I just wish it was there for me and Pop back in the day. You know. Oof. Well, we can only exactly. Do we can do, exactly. But breaking it down, that was a uh trying to keep our relationship hidden you know and it's do we have actually have a relationship if nobody knows about it um one of the friends from way back is is management now at this point and uh whenever she would come over to end up spending a night we my dad lived on a main road at that point in time i live at my dad's house there is no way i'm letting her park out front because it's for god and everybody to see the one day she parks out front, he decides to drive past and plaster through all upper management that I am apparently dating the dispatcher. Mm. And fast forward a year later, that turns into me getting axed. You know, I've been at, at that point, I've been in air conditioning for five years. What it turns into is mm, the security that the company has, financial security and everything else. I, I always knew that it, when I had left the company, it, I would be running for the rest of my natural life. Um, you know, looking for a job financially, it probably I'm going to end up saying what it, what it cost you. It could have cost me anywhere between, I'm going to say, Fifty and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars over my net career. God damn, that's um, a lot but, of money for thirty seconds of old baby. Damn, holy crap! the The bad part is, is the tears that came from the actual breakup coming from me was not for her; it was for the four kids. Oh yeah, yeah. It gets it gets better, and I'll try to end up throwing some speed on this with everything that that Pop knows what's going on in the background. Um my last job that I, I had called you guys like a year ago or whatnot. Um, I ended up getting let go from there cause I, I was starting to be relatively toxic with, with the court situation and all the, all the rest of it or whatever. I offended somebody, whatever. So the irony is the person who plastered all of my news everywhere is now in charge of all of the service departments. Wow. And the person I was dating is in charge of all of the call center. I cannot, it was right in the spring. Well, it was for the past two or three months, I was unemployed trying to find a damn job. And then it turned into the guy who initially got me into air conditioning called over to the guy who ended up plastering my news everywhere and said, hey, what would you think about bringing them back? As of this point, I haven't seen any of them or talked to them on the phone in 12 years. I come walking in as now a 20-year technician, uh -huh. and I, I am sitting across the table from the other supervisor, who I'm pretty sure that she was cheating on me with. He's not, He is a trainer. Um, I'm sitting across the, the table from him, and at first I could see that. Are we going to have some type of issue type of deal? And I just give him the look of, dude, you threw yourself on a grenade for me. Thank you. <laughs> but nice. now as of this point, it's one of those that hopefully I am back at the largest air conditioning company in the world. And hopefully I can retain this because if anything from the before mentioned ends up taking any type of hold or whatever else, I won't be able to, to keep this job. You, wow. you need to get my uh, administrative violence uh, workings man edition. Oh, oh I yeah. am. I I have. It is one of those. Yes, sir. Yeah, and actually, we're gonna we're gonna put that back up for sale here. Uh, yes. Starting when? Uh, Memorial Day. Le oh, I thought yeah. Memorial Day till Memorial Father's Day till Father's Day. Yeah. yeah. We're we're gonna be having like a two week sale on all the webinars. They're gonna be like a super sale price. It's probably the last time they're gonna be up for sale. So. Yeah. Well, um, we'll see. We'll see. Administrative violence, uh, you know, you either you either learn it naturally or you die in the process. 
That's the way I view it. Correct. Yeah. One of the things, one of the last things, and then I'll end up getting out of the way. I know you got, th I believe, three more behind me. Yep. Um, the, uh, <laughs> just a laugh, female technicians are now here at this company. Mm -hmm. I have nothing bad to say, but it's one of those, I'm going to talk to them just like I talked to a damn man. And I'm pretty sure about an hour and a half ago, I gave one of them PTSD. <laughs> and it, it was one of those, uh, I, I was giving her full on instructions. And it's one of those, Hey, do me a favor, go to the back door, knock on the door and ask for a paper towel and get that girl snot because I can <laughs> hear it. it. It's like it, what, what you did is just, an, we're not even to the, Oh shit part of your, of your job. If you're going to end up staying in air conditioning, this is, this is not the, Oh shit part. I'll tell you when to say, Oh shit. When I'm, when I'm scared, run, be the first person, um, <laughs> to just go, you know, but, but yes, uh, it was one of those, she did send me a text message while I was waiting in the back going, yes, no, I, I, I'm fine. I had another technician come over here and uh, double check my work. And it's like, if you did everything that I told you to do, you shouldn't have somebody double check your shit. Yep. Yeah. But that's about it. And also, Pop, I'll go ahead and keep you informed. Hopefully you get an email after June. Okay. If you get an email after June, I came out clean. All right. Keep but I, I, exactly. I, I, I so badly want to say something, but I'm, I'm not going to do it. It's All one right. of those can't talk about the case. All right. No problem, man. All, All right. right. Next. All right, guys. Take it yep. easy, man. Take Everyone. it easy, Jeremy. Definitely. Good luck with that. All right. Uh, we got uh, Wackle the Weird. Gee, I wonder who this is. <laughs> What's up, you motherfucking fucking fox? What's going on, man? <laughs> oh, I, it's 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 slow where I'm at. It's slow, but I'm I'm getting there. All right. I'm still having good. problems with those Invato whatever stuff that I need to download. I, I don't know what's going on, but for some reason, downloading them is being weird. Well, uh, shoot me an email. We'll uh, pick a time and we can uh, video conference it, get it figured out. All right. All right. What's your Thanks, story, Captain. Wild Man? Is this one of your stories or uh, another one of your buddies who uh, likes to, you know, stick it in Latina's pooches? No. no wait, okay. um, <laughs> wait. Well, she was Latina. Uh, so it's uh, not me because, <laughs> uh, first of all, I've been watching pop stuff for, you know, since I was in middle school. So. Eh, that 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 awesomeness of understanding don't dip your wick in the company ink or as one lady told me don't get your honey where you make your money because that's a good that one. makes complete sense yep. uh i haven't had that happen to me because i am a paranoid motherfucker but but your friends are not so lucky uh, one guy that i did work with yes that did happen and it actually ended up with people getting fire fire yeah <clears throat> so he was a army recruit i say recruit because he didn't make it through basic because he had gotten severely injured and they had to medically i drop don't know him. if it would be drop him they had to yeah. drop him he break his dick trying to dip it in the company ink no he had broken <laughs> his hip i think when he was Ooh. doing xbox body <laughs> no he actually wasn't he was actually just he was about the average build dude he wasn't fat he wasn't skinny he actually had bigger arms than i did mm -hmm. but apparently uh i either they just had him do some stupid shit that was beyond what he was capable of doing and he broke himself or he overexerted himself i don't know i didn't ask i thought that was a bit personal so i didn't ask him all right so he was messing around with a new hire, a Latina, probably she, she could have been just straight out of high school. She must have been 18 years old working at customer service. And he's a regular employee. He's just stocking the shelves, cleaning, doing the basic shit. She's doing the desk job stuff. And he's messing with her. Frequently find those two back in the break room, sitting across from each other, talking in whispers, probably whispering sweet nothings towards yep. each other, like that couple that you would find in high school, sitting at the lunch table, being very awkward as fuck. Yep. Um, well, 
he leaves to do whatever job, but not before he breaks it to me that he's engaged already. Oh, no. Shows me a picture of his quote unquote fiance, and she looked like your stereotypical Instagram wannabe model. Oh, boy. A brunette. Looks like she had bleached her hair and then highlighted them with that silvery platinum hair color. Okay. So I can already tell you right now, he's in his 20s and he's engaged to that. That's not going to end too well. Nope. Right out the gate, I already know that's not going to go too well. I also know it's not going to go well because he's engaged to her. Meanwhile, he's messing with some bubble booty Latina working at the at the customer service desk. Well, I mean, so, you know, how old was this guy? He couldn't have been older than 23. Dick thinking. Dick thinking. Yeah. Yeah. He is Omega. He's uber mocking dick thinking. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, he's caught right in the middle of the dick thinking cycle. Yes, he is. I mean, not as like much as uh, so what these two motherfuckers. So, so what happened? Well, I know, right? So he leaves, and I didn't get confirmation of it, but I did find out that she was handing out uh, discounts to people making online sales or phone sales, and I mean discounts that were not viable like they were getting discounts that had no grounding for them they weren't military discounts they weren't uh like you've got a credit card with the company kind of discounts yeah, yeah. just taking money off of the sales costing the company money well, uh and it wasn't just her it was also i guess you could probably call her a cougar because she was in her 30s and she was very flirtatious and touchy with other employees mm, the youngins yes uh i i was there and she was one that would get really close to me and i'm thinking first of all i can smell the cigarette smoke off you <laughs> Stop. That, that is such an anti-hydraulic yes it is and oh. secondly i know you've got four kids because you told all of us yep. so the it's yoga pants the and the, the hairstyle that the young girls have been still using is not going to compensate for the for the cigarette smoke and the fact that you're probably a single mother because I didn't see any ring on that finger. Mm. So those two were That's handing the out. Ring of fire. Yes, the burning ring of fire, which any guy that decides to get uh, some uh, cougar ass and jump on that grenade is definitely going to experience that burning burning ring of fire. Yep, right in the prison wallet. Right in the prison wallet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, clear <laughs> back blast. I know, right? All right. So what happened? So got fired. It it gets so severe in terms of how much money they were discounting that a corporate bigwig stepped in and personally showed up to the location told them clear out their lockers and walked them out personally wow not security that's how it should the corporate big wig the that's how it yeah. should go yeah yeah both of them were walked out okay mm. so not only was this guy dick thinking but he was also a little bit of a uh, probably a little bit of a manipulator and got some people fired. Yep. Well, listen, man, okay. whenever you stir the, uh, the pink pocket at your place of employment, usually it, uh, the end result is firing sometimes charges. If you're a dude. Yeah. In this era, I mean, in this era, it's just, you're, I, I can't feel sorry for a person doing it. Like it's just it's it's playing with a ring of fire. Yeah, <laughs> there you exactly. go. Exactly. Yeah, uh, and all you do is make an ass of yourself. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, pretty Get much. One of those, right there. <laughs> all right, man. Yep. Let's let's hit the next one. Thanks for calling, all Jack. Right. We got one more call. All um, right, you guys have a good one. Brother. Yeah, it just reminds me of I used to work at Blockbuster. Actually, mm -hmm. one of the best bosses I ever had. 
Her name was Corinne, second store manager, came in, ran that place like clockwork. Everything was great. We all used to hang out together after work. Big mistake. I know that now. <laughs> and then one night, we had all been swimming in the pool, been drinking, hanging out. I'm, we're just sitting there kind of drying off up on the deck on the second level of the house. I look over. She's sitting in one dude's lap, and she's massaging another dude sitting next to her, his wing-wang with her feet. And I'm like, this is going to get this bad. Is bad, right? <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> real bad. Well, sure enough, it all came to a head figuratively and literally because that's what she does. And after banging like half of the freaking crew, thankfully, I was not among them. Word finally got back to the regional manager. Ask me if she got fired. No, Did she get she fired? Didn't. She got promoted. Oh, my God. What? Promoted and transferred back to Pennsylvania, where her family was from. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we all have our suspicions as to why. Probably because we knew our regional manager's rental history. And uh, he didn't exactly go for the new releases, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. He always went for the soft core porn. Let's, let's get that last <laughs> one in here. And it's uh... all right. We're only taking one last call. Sorry, moron, Martin, but you're a little too late. Mr. E's the last one. And then we're going to be taking a break for new tech. Uh, yep. Mr. E, how you doing? Good, sir. I love the glasses. Hey, how you, how you guys doing, man? <laughs> He's got Pretty those good, life glasses on. Mm -hmm. Well, I've I've got two stories, but one of them I don't think is good. It's been covered on the story on uh, the show before. For my okay. second marriage, uh, I met her at work. I married her. I got fired from work on a on a false campaign of uh, sexual harassment. Lovely, and ended up divorcing her because I was about ready to murder every last goddamn fucking one of them. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there, bro. I didn't want her wrapped up in it. So if I had stayed the course, I probably wouldn't have wouldn't have divorced her. So, but the first one, first wife. Now this isn't a I met her at work or anything like that. I took her to work. Uh oh. And it led to uh, it led to her befriending my you know a person at work and then like trying to motion him in to be a best friend uh-huh and then fucker and i caught them in the act oh uh, yeah only when i caught them in the act I, I i didn't suspect anything but then i'm like you know what something's a little bit fucked up going on here i left i went to uh well i went to my mom and dad's for a second because i had a i had a little something there that i thought i was going to need well, I understand completely. And I went, I went back to the house, his truck and my brother-in-law's car are in my, uh, in my driveway. No. Well, I stop. I turn myself around and go toward a different area of, uh, enter my house through an alternate, uh, entrance. entrance. See that my brother-in-law and sister or, and sister-in-law are both on the uh, porch. And looks like they're standing guard. I locked the door behind them so they can't come in. <laughs> walk up the stairs, which I'm going to tell you right now. If you want to walk up the stairs and have it sound like nobody is coming up, up the stairs, don't walk on the middle fucking part of it. Nope. Walk on the edge. Walk on the edge. Busted okay. out this bad boy. <laughs> and went to open up the door it was locked i took a step back took a deep breath in kicked the fucking thing almost completely off the hinge and there they are All naked right. and as you know got the gun got the gun trained on him Equalizing. actually i had a second one but it you know so got two, it. Right. two of them right at him Michael I didn't say I didn't say a word except for get walking. Yeah. I escorted him out of my house in the middle of fucking December, just just post Christmas, Ohio weather, completely fucking naked, locked his bitch ass out of my house. <laughs> didn't let him get his clothes. Nice. That's how it goes, man. Put the yeah. you know, put the guns away because I mean I didn't want to fight with this guy, and I was sure that uh you know, my, my five foot one, 90 pounds soaking wet wife was not going to put up any kind of a fight. I just walked up. And I was like, all right, 
you are going to get the fuck out of my house. I will have my attorney send send you papers. Don't come back to my house until yeah. my attorney has called, and I and I'm changing the locks. There you go. I let her get her clothes on because the bitch is still my wife. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> okay, and. I've already alerted the presence of uh, the police at this particular point. I'm I, I know that. So I, how, long, how long ago did this happen? It was uh, December twenty eighth of nineteen ninety six. Whatever happened to her? Don't know. Don't care. All right. Because usually when women do shit like that, it, you know, down the road karma tends to get even. Oh, well, yeah. yep. I can say this. There's a story that goes along post this one, but I'm going to save that for some other time. All right, we got to we got to get to super chats anyway, brother. But thank you. Yeah, for yeah that's nine thirty two. We usually take a break at around nine fifteen at the latest, but we wanted to give you guys a chance to say your piece. I, I will say, I will say in in quick closing, my I called my mom and dad. They were they live twenty two blocks away from me. They were there almost as soon as I hung up the fucking phone. <laughs> dad called a fucking. A lawyer, just a just the dirtiest motherfucker out there, <laughs> and you know to protect my ass. Mm -hmm. And then we went to you know, well, then I explained to uh, his wife why he ended up with fucking frostbite on his feet, <laughs> and she took me upstairs and I fucked her in all three holes, <laughs> 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 and then she soaked his fucking ass. All right. Now, now, normally, I you know, normally Ow. I don't, I don't particularly care for when women do this, but when he fucks around, and I'm not just saying this because he fucked he, around with my wife. I'm saying this in general. I don't mind the bitch cleaning him out. Yeah, yeah. he caused it. He can fucking deal with it. Yeah, whoever breaches the marriage contract first, as far as I'm concerned, they forfeit Arma. everything. You get what you get. Yeah. Get what you get. So, go through it. I'm glad to speak with you guys and uh, you know, thanks you too for what you do. I know I've never met you, but I'd take a bullet for either one of you. Oh, let's not go that far. <laughs> I Maybe appreciate what help. you guys do. It you know, it it means it means a lot more to me than uh, I let on a lot of the time. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it, Mr. E. And, I, and again, I, I love those sunglasses. If I wasn't a blind bastard, I'd probably have a set. But uh, yeah. 2010 with the glasses. Uh, yeah, it's about as Ooh. far as I can make it. Like, <laughs> all, right. That's blind that's shit. Yeah. all right, let's uh, take a break take and go to history. Okay. All right. And we do have one more story from uh, Sean Oink. We'll uh, read that when we go over to New Tech. I'm just going to read these super chats here on YouTube, but we're going to take a quick break. We do have a bunch of fucked up but funny submissions waiting for us over on New Tech. Uh, David W. says, a day from Rustic Oak sent you guys some mix. Hope it found you. I have not box. been to the to the box yet. I mean, uh, expect a donation on this June as my sales tick up. First quarter is a bit tight. Uh, much appreciated. And third super chat ever. Thank you very much. Count Chad the Impaler. I'm 56. Never dated anyone at work. Smart man. Today I ended a seven-year relationship with a non-cohabitating girlfriend. I have retired from dating and relationships. Good well, for you, brother. Welcome to the club. I, I did that two years ago. Uh, Brian Ranger sent in 50 as well as a phone call. Thank you very much, good sir. He says, friends of mine that were, uh, you know, plus minus a Simpson dating at work and got their ass excommunicated. Mm. That's what happens, man. Uh, cool Cat says, much love to all the men. No homo, of course. <laughs> and Alex Patino talking about the, uh, the barracks bunnies. In Korea, we call them queen for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Or was that what do they call them? A deployment eight? A deployment eight. Deployment yeah. eight's queen for a year in Korea. Nice. Well, as long as it's not Thailand, because then you have to double check. Get a madam's apple. Yeah. It's quite disgusting. In the burning ring of fire. You take a bite out of that, you might actually lose a tooth, even if you don't have one loose. Disgusting. All right. We're going to take a quick break here. Go empty your squirrel bladders, refill your menageries or your herbal tea with a couple of shots of cup my balls if you prefer. <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah, it's on when we get over there. Not only do we have Sean Oink's story, or, or uh, yeah, I think, I think it's Sean OUK's story, we also have Reaper Zero One with a story. All right. Those are always. And you know it's on like Donkey Kong when Reaper writes in. 
dare you? <laughs> so follow the links on and over to New Tech. If you haven't joined us there yet, this should be your first time. We'll just avoid the prison wallet. <laughs> See you in five. Take it easy. Yeah.